Hi everyone, welcome to the Motorcycle Rescuer channel. This is Motorcycle Rescuer. Thank you. <laughs> I'm glad I started the camera a few minutes ago now. What? Because we've got you going back and forward in the same lock. Oh, great. <laughs> Alright, guys, welcome back. Um, this bike. made it this bike has been over on its side twice and it gets this oil leak um, now I'm sure the oil leak is just coming through the air box what happens is when the um, bike goes on its side the oil travels up past the piston and then it comes out the only place it can which is into the air box so I'm pretty sure we'll be popping the air box off this there should be a little pool of oil in there it will be cleaning that up and then you shouldn't get any more because the oil isn't coming from, there's nowhere higher than this. It would either be from here itself, and there isn't any oil in there. So the only place it can be is the air box, which is fine. That's an easy resolve. So let's pop this off. Let's see if I'm right. Let's see if there's oil in there. Let's clean it out, and then this should be done and dusted. Um, it's been over twice as well, so it's going to have a, you know, a fair little pool of oil in there. And you can see where it's been trickling down. But look, you can also see where it's coming from. That's easy. All right, guys, exactly what I thought. I told Dawn three weeks ago to do this. I said, you're going to get a pool spill out. That's all it is, it's a pool. Remember, when the bike goes on its side, guys, the oil will travel up past the piston and it has to collect somewhere. It will either go back down into its reservoir or it will come through the airbox so it pulls here like this. That's exactly what we're seeing. Um, once you clean it, as long as it doesn't go over anytime soon, you won't see any more of that oil. Um, that's old oil, the, so that is dirty. The new oil is much cleaner in there. I've already checked that already. It's much better. This is quite simple. We take clean as much off as you can. Um, this bike wouldn't have been running particularly well because the oil would have been being sucked through the compression system, and that just wouldn't help. So we clean it all out, we'll sponge off the actual filter, we chuck it all back in. That is a quick, easy fix. And then this bike is out of my life, finally. Um, this was Warren's bike, and if you see the way Warren treats bikes, you'd realise. Uh, I am glad that's the fix though, guys. Simple, we'll clean that up, we'll chuck it all back together. This bike's good to go. Okay, guys. They are much shorter than shocks, much, much shorter actually. Um, we're here, uh, same same house actually. Um, Amanda and Dawn and Leon are all on the Facebook page, so if you want to ever chat to them, you can chat to them on that page. Um, them shocks are much, much smaller. They're 11 inch, eye to eye. She's a smurf. And they were, a, they were a 14, 15. Yeah, wow. They're, they're good though, they're, they're adjustable and they're nice. At the moment, guys, this bike don't fire up, but when I was listening to it on the channel, it was very close. It had a splutter, and that means, you know, if it's got a splutter, that means it's close to starting up. Not far off at all. So you can try some things like you can chuck in some uh, flammable spray uh, just to kind of help get it started. But the first thing we need to do is check the spark plug, make sure it actually is sparking. Um, I haven't got a spark plug remover. There might be one here in Leon's kit. Uh, and you you haven't checked for spark, have you? 
No, last the time last we, we gave it a wiggle, didn't we? I, I gave <laughs> the, 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 the cat that goes over the spark plug. Yeah. I gave that wiggle, then it start off, then it started. It had a bit of life, didn't it? a bit of life. Okay, all we need to do for now is check it actually has spark, and then we'll look at some of the other stuff. Um, see the, the hanging loose wire you were talking about? Yeah, I've been told it was How does this come off? Alarm. Um, now I don't think that's right. I don't think it is for a standard alarm because no. I don't think these came with standard alarms. Oh, 53 though. This is probably the latest model. It could have. So this is the pin we've all been wondering about, guys. Um, I mean that could that definitely could be an alarm because it's got everything some of the connectors i was considering was the regulator that's down here that's fine that's yeah. normal um i still think that this is a an old cdi it would have gone in like that down there yeah. and then this cdi is the replacement but this bike at some point ran and uh it rid basically so hmm. so we'll get that nipped up that's not going to help really good connection and we need to know we've got spark has the uh, car been cleaned no. I haven't had it long. Yeah, you have. I haven't. You've I've had it weeks. I've had it since just after Christmas. I haven't had it long. I think I bought mine around the same time you got yours. One thing I can see here, guys, that's uh, that's interesting is the size of that gap. This head isn't... Um, it's not bolted down securely, actually. Look at the gap here. No, it's the engine. Oh, really? So there should be a gasket in there. You shouldn't see it. There should be no play. That head needs bolting down a little bit more. Um, I don't even know how we get into that. Let's, for now, let's uh, check we've got some spark. The spark plug doesn't look happy. The lead looks too bent. I think, let's, uh, we'll check, we'll clean the uh, spark plug wires. We'll clean the connector here. We'll clean the um, coil leads and then we'll go back to a uh, straight start up Where would my relay be? that should be blocked off what relay are you talking about starter this starter relay you've been yeah. driving us nuts about yeah. that's. that's your starter relay really? but it wouldn't yeah. turn over you, it wouldn't be turning over no. so that's not going to affect your spark okay. um, Let's have a look. Right, I'm going to cut off a minute. We're going to have a look at the connector under here first, guys. We always chop an inch of that off, um, so we've got a nice, fresh connection. And then I'll find the actual coil, and we'll look at giving the leads a bit of a clean, so we've got the best possible spark. Um, automatic choke. That's working. That's there. Right, guys. Just so we've done enough, we're just looking at. Um, we've, we've taken the bucket off here. We're just going to look at the connections. Bloody hell, there are spiders in there. Um, all these old connectors are the stuff that we need to look at. We've got brake cleaner. We'll give them all a bit of a clean. Now, we need to find the actual coil wires. They're probably most important at this stage. They're quite complex bikes, these. Uh, DNAs? DNAs, yeah, they are. Getting to the, uh, the parts we need. Like, I don't want to drop the petrol tank. It's a pain in the ass. But at the moment, I can't see the coil wires, which is what we might need to find... Uh, I don't think there was, I'd be shocked if it was showing spark, and if it was, it won't be showing enough. So let's start with the basics, let's get all of the wiring cleaned up, because it's caked, I mean that's terrible, and it will look just as terrible on the inside I'm sure. There you go. That's not too bad actually, that one. Let's get this one. That's not, that's not that clean, that one. That one needs a good clean. And then that one is, looks like it's barely alive. Right, let's get some cleaner in there. Right, guys, this is an interesting uh, kind of uh, predicament here, really. So, obviously, the uh, coil has a green and a black, doesn't it? Except the green wire here has a black head and the black wire has a green head. So, I think we need to try both ways round on this bike. Um, these guys say they haven't had these wires off. Nope. Uh, nope. But... If this is standard, that's ridiculous. It should be the black on the black side. It should be the green on the green side. Unless, of course, the black is um, the earth 
and is meant to be green. So uh, I'm going to try these both ways around and we're going to check to see if we've got spark anyway. All right, guys, check this out. All we did was swap the coil wires. To be fair, that's not all we did. We've cleaned all the wiring on the bike and um, and we swapped the coil wires back over because we weren't sure. Let's see what we get. exhaust as well yeah why don't we just chuck it on loose because it needs some back pressure do we know how much fuel's in it Probably about i only, i didn't put a lot in i only put in about this about about, about two quid's worth okay it's worth doing because while this because this was on here i couldn't get the proper angle at in this in this can of that can have you got a uh, funnel or should we just tip it We'll be alright. Um, oh, it's going to go everywhere, isn't it? Oh, cool. Do you want me to get the funnel? Oh, I asked about the funnel. <laughs> the, see, the thing is, if it fires up, you're going to want it to sit for a good 5, 10, 15 minutes, you know, to, to oil itself up. Yeah. There you go. Don't, don't light anything. Anytime soon. <laughs> it'll, be your, it'll be your lot. <laughs> Yeah, let's chuck down even if it's loose, because it needs some back pressure. Right, if we get it started, we'll let it sit for a bit, you know, so it can, it can sort itself out. not to give it a, a carb clean. We don't like any photo at all.
thought we should go for a very quick car clean. Nuts not to while we're here. So um, the carb, uh, basically we couldn't get the screws off to clean it. It almost definitely needs a good clean out. What you'd need to do is dremel them and, and get them out. It's something, I mean, it's something I'd, I'd probably take home and do. But it's a bit of a pain. Uh, we'll think about what's next for that actually. What we want to do is kind of get it up and idled again and see if it gives something. The other thing I'm wondering is, I think this is a fuel pump, so is it trickling fuel or is it pumping fuel? We'll need to work that out. I'm not sure, I don't even know where the fuel's coming from. It's got to be a pump. I think we should spin it over and see if we're uh, spitting out enough fuel. I assume that this is the fuel line. Yeah. So what we'll do is we'll turn it over and make sure we're punching out enough fuel. And then uh, if we are, plug it back on and we'll just try and get it nipped up basically. And We want it to idle for a few minutes. We need to get it warm, get the oil circulated. Okay everyone, so the, um, the fuel pump wasn't pumping. That's interesting. It uses two systems. There's a, su a suction system. And then it's not an electric system. I think it's just a centrifugic centrifugic system, centrifugal um, pump in there. So that that's something we're going to have to look at. But for now, I'm running a wire, a line, directly down into the carb. We'll fill it up with fuel, and we'll see if this just is a kind of normal runner after the very basic work we've done. If if it fires up and idles and revs a little bit. Then we know we need a new fuel pump and we probably need a bunch of fuel lines. Uh, you'd be nuts at this stage not to change them all. Um, and a bunch of suction lines as well. Alright guys, ignore the uh, not so beautiful ass assistant. Um, we're putting fuel directly into the carb using a Nat's Knackers Yard bong style um, fuel tank. Straight into the carb, we'll see if it starts and idles and then we'll see if it revs. If it does, then we know exactly what we need. We need a fuel pump and fuel lines, and then this bike would go back to kind of originally running well. Um, even the exhaust is kind of okay on it. It seems seems alright. So look at that. That's, that's watertight. Fuel everywhere. Yeah. Give it a minute. Not got 
much left. All right, guys, so this is what we're going to do. Uh, there's no fuel pumping. The carb don't look right, and we'll need a clean. There's wires all over the place. Um, we're going to get this back to my garage over the next couple of days, and we will uh, basically we'll build it over the next month or, or uh, six weeks or so and get it kind of as, as best as we can. Um, it needs fork seals, which I'm not going to do. I, I hate doing fork seals, but... We'll do as best as we can on the rest of it for now and get it kind of running, riding, doing something. We heard it start today. That was literally starting on fumes because there was no fuel coming out of that pipe. So the tiny drips it had and the fumes, it was kind of kicking over and firing. So that's good news. We've heard that this engine is a good runner. And of course, we, um, we solved Dawn's bike issue, which is great as well. So we've achieved a fair amount today, but... Yeah, no, I'm happy. I'm happy that we heard it actually, and that exhaust sounds fine and all. It's not too loud, um, so that's great news. So this will be on the channel properly within the next couple of days. I would have thought. Uh, I have to thank Aiden. Aiden gave me this, uh, well, borrowed me this big old, uh, what do you call it, gazebo, yeah. real big solid one. And actually today, if we didn't have that, it would be really cold and wet and nasty. So uh, Aiden, thank you so much. That's Aiden from North On Gym, guys. He's, uh, he's got a gym in Islington and when he reopens, I'd love locals to start using him if they were considering gyms because he's the best place around, reasonably priced and they're just lovely people and all of our local need, need the support really. Alright guys, back at the garage a couple of hours later and uh, I've got some parts arrived for the Lex Moto. I have a new ignition set, I believe it's the right one, hopefully it is. That will solve all of the um, wiring issues, ideally. And then, of course, we've got the new regulator here, and we uh, and I'll show you the new the problem that we think has caused us most issues is this little bad boy here. It's a diode. Um. Yeah. It, 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 some, it does some sort of voltage controlling. Um, so I think with all of this back together, we actually do have a nice running charging um, Lex Moto there. So that's good and ready to go. Um, the DNA today, uh, I'm bringing that back. Like I said, I'm gonna bring that to the garage, work on it for a couple of weeks. And uh, I am going to look at a couple of bikes later today um, to see what I collect. Also. The new uh, barrel for my DNA is, is here. It came one day later. I ordered it yesterday morning. It came one day later. So uh, that's brilliant. So that could be a tomorrow video. So I'm busy, very busy, guys. But for now, I'm going to piece um, the lock set, put down the um, one of... I can't... One of these regulators worked better than the other, and I can't remember what one worked better. I think it was the black one. So I'm going to bolt down the black one and... Put it all together and then check the voltage basically and see if it's working. I'm not going to put all of the panels in. Although I might actually because no matter what this bike needs to go even if it's still broken. But um, either way yeah this bike's going to be. It's the regulator that bothers me. I can't remember which one appeared to work better. One did. Anyway let me. Uh, I'll try the one on it. I'll chuck the battery on. I've got that somewhere. And I will fire it up and we'll see what's happening. Nice thing about the battery is it's not charged, so it wouldn't be maxed out. We will see if the bike is putting a charge into that battery. And uh, that will be absolutely great news if it did.
So there you go guys, 1304, 1305, that's its uh, resting hot resting heat at the moment. Um, it lifts nice and gently with revs, that's great. I think the battery is fully charged now, so it's not rising as much as I'd want, but it is rising for a little bit of rest in the seat. So the bike is currently doing what we need it to do guys. Um, it is charging way above what it should be and lifts with the revs. What I need to do now is start piecing it back together. There was something else I was thinking. Yes, I want to put the lights on to check to see if they're still flickering. Um, they shouldn't be, they should be solid now. That will give us uh, another indication of how we're looking at. So let me get that panel out and we'll see if they're not so flickery. There you go guys, proof's in the pudding, see the lights, nice and stable, no flickering, that means the whole system's working well. I am extremely pleased, I can't, I can't even get across. Um, uh, Jake made this happen, this is Jake's bike. He put the original stator on, I put the new wiring loom and I put the first bolt CDI on and the main thing needed was the new diode, that's this down here, that's this part here. That was impacting massively. Um, it is charging there on its normal idle 12.1 that's lovely that's that's stunning um, and like you can see there the lights are nice and smooth that means we're back up and running that's great news that means we can sell this ASAP and uh, start with something else oh thank god guys I can't I can't kind of I'm not sure how I feel it's like it's like this huge relief actually guys because um, it's a nice bike you know so I'm hugely relieved I'm going to start throwing the panels back on piecing it back together and I'm going to celebrate with a Pepsi Max all right guys check it out we've got a beautiful stunning Lexmoto FMR uh, the battery panels off because I'm going to charge it overnight um, but it's a 2016 Lexmoto FMR 9,000 miles on the clock are these miles or km I think it's miles. Um, it is actually in great nick, guys. Now it's kind of all back together and, and, and it's had a rag over it. It's actually in, in, a, in good condition. Uh, it's going to go up online for around 800. Uh, absolutely starts, runs and rides well and is charging now. So uh, that's good going. Doesn't have... What? Doesn't have to... Jake's, that Jake's there saying you're welcome. But I, I kind of had an argument saying he didn't really do enough. Um... All he did was change the stator back to the original one. I'd done all the wiring loom and the two regulators and found the diode issue. I changed the lock set. How does that work? <laughs> yeah, so yeah, that was, I was at work. But anyway, guys, seriously, this is it. This is the bike. Um, I think tomorrow, Jake, I'll charge the battery overnight. I'll put that panel on tomorrow. I'll put a bit of shine on it. I'll get the pictures tomorrow. Right. Yeah. And I'm actually going to look at a Kawasaki ER, ER5, Sultan. Same as yours. Are you thinking what I'm thinking? No, I will never, ever, ever Cast. be thinking what you're thinking. Cast! Cast the bike! Nah, it's not worth it. Got an angle grader at home, get a, uh, another train, see what's your uncle. Nah, it's you. not worth it, definitely not worth it. Alright guys, uh, I, I'm not going to show you the ER5 today if I go and collect it, so uh, thanks for watching. Uh, press the like button. Hopefully today's video will upload. Yesterday's did not. Um, and uh, yeah, we've got a good few projects coming up. Uh, rescue himself. Wanna say hi? Alright. Always alright, never hi or how are we doing or good evening. Anyways, um, we're on the motorway. I'm going to, I believe it's Staines or Onslow or something like that. Staines, yeah. Staines. Um, going to Staines. Uh, well, Charlie's picked up a ER5. Um, I wonder where you got that idea from. <laughs> and um, you picked up from South London. Um, all right, Giza. They um, ride nice, the ER. They do ride nice. They kind of, they just kind of plod along, and that's what I like about it. Um, plodding along. That's the newest trend from Mr. Rescue One. We got the uh, my iPhone here. That's on like 30 percent. Going to well, how much percent was on? I'm on 36, you're on good news. 18 minutes to get there. Um, 30% getting there. Um, we picked up the ER5 and we're picking up a, uh, as you say, a Boba Fett. I think it's called a Tam Tamaretti or Tam Tamarotti. Oh, no, 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 you mentioned what you said before. You disrespected the Fett man's name. Uh, it's got it's got a Boba Fett style colour scheme. Right. Uh, but you've talked about doing a Boba Fett style bike. So. Yeah, with the red, the green, 
the little bit of brown, the Mandalorian logo, not 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 this atrocious tea. Well, this is halfway there. It's, it's not halfway there. It's nowhere near there. How do you know you ain't seen it? I've seen it. You showed me a picture of it, and I was like, no, I'm not having none of that. It does look crap, this bike. It, it looks, it looks it, bad. It, it, it looks shit. <laughs> I don't <laughs> so know why so we're quick. going. I really don't sometimes. It's because you're high high on the feeling the dopamine level of buying one bike you want one more because you sold one bike for an extraordinary amount no yes you're like i got one i'm also buy another one it's literally when you buy tools you buy a drill you're gonna want a handsaw you want a handsaw you want a planer you want a planer you want a chop saw you want a workshop now you want a garage and then 20 years later building bikes <laughs> it's nothing like that <laughs> okay, it's